Alrighty. Hello and welcome to Photo P Basics. My name is Hannah. I'm an instructor at PAR Library. And today I will be assisted by my chat facilitator, Caitlin. Please say hi, Caitlin. Hi, everyone. Awesome. Um, some ground rules before we get started. Your mics have been muted on purpose. If you have program related questions you would like to ask, please do so in the chat, which can be accessed at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Your text will be seen only by panelists, not all attendees. Any inappropriate behavior will result in your removal from this virtual program. We will try to answer the questions as we go along, but there will be time for Q&A after the lesson is over. A recording of this class will be sent out at a later date. If you are on a computer right now and would like to participate as we go along, please navigate to photop.com, P-E-A. And let's get started. All right, so I'm at photop.com. Um, so what is Photop? Photop is a free online-based software used to create and enhance photographs and illustrations. It is on par with Photoshop, um, but it is free and you don't have to install any software. This software <clears throat> can support many different file types. JPEG, which is the most common um, image format. TIFF, CR2, those are some raw files you can edit in here. And even Photoshop documents themselves. All right. <laughs> And we're going to be um, doing two different types of editing today. One of them is indirectly by using layers, which I will explain as we go along. And then directly by rewriting the properties of the pixels themselves. Um, there should be at some point some example files posted in chat that you can navigate to and download and work alongside me with. Um, or you can just, you know, pull up some random images you might have on your computer. Let's see here. Caitlin, are there any preliminary questions before I get started? Not at this time. Okay, perfect. All right, so I have gone to photop.com and I'm going to select open from computer since I already have these images downloaded. Open from computer. And I'm going to do photop example photos. And let's see here, I'm gonna do Lighthouse. I'm gonna select Lighthouse, select Open. And da, 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 da. Um, a, an interesting tidbit about Photopy is that it does not automatically save files to your computer as it is a web-based software. So you will have to manually save your file um, as either a Photoshop document, if you would like to return to it and edit it some more later, or as a JPEG, if you want to save all of your changes. You're going to have to save that manually to your computer if you wish to exit your browser and not lose your work. Um, so, you know, if there's a big power outage or your computer shuts down or something like that, just make sure you're regularly saving your files to your computer manually. Let's talk workspace first. Um, this workspace is very, very similar to Photoshop itself. Up here, where you can see file, edit, image, layer, select, all that fun stuff, that is called the top menu or the file menu. This is where you will find commonly used functions such as file for saving and exporting, edit for fill, stroke, and transform, an image for all sorts of adjustments as well as some other attributes up here you can explore at your leisure. Over here in this right hand area is the layers panel. We're going to talk about layers as we go but you're going to want to pay attention to which layer you're on. Um, it's very important to make sure you're editing the layer you intend to edit and you keep everything pretty organized in this program. Over here on the far left, where all these fun little icons are, that is your toolbar. The toolbar contains all of the commonly used tools for photo editing, such as the Move tool up here, the Lasso tool, 
right here, which is used for selecting. And a fun one that I like to point out is the clone stamp tool, which we will probably cover later in the lesson. Um, each of these tools, they are organized based on function. So we have our selection tools right here, the marquee and the lasso tool. And if you can notice, it's very tiny, but there's a little tiny um, triangle in the corner of this tool. That means that there, is, uh, there are sub tools in that little collapsible menu. So if you right click it, you can see that there are sub tools that are, um, they do the same process, but just in a different way. So we're gonna focus on that later. Up here underneath that top menu or that file menu, is the options bar. This options bar will have uh, varying customizable aspects for the tool you have currently selected. So right now I have the move tool selected. If I change this to the text tool, now we have options to edit text. So it's gonna change based on what tool you have currently selected. All right. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and dip into what are called adjustment layers. Um, adjustment layers are a great way to non-destructively edit aspects of your photos, such as brightness, hue and saturation, and color. So if you notice over here, this is your layers panel. And then this tiny little icon down here that is a circle um, that is half empty, half full, that is your um, adjustment layer icon. That's how you can add new adjustment layers. So I'm going to select this once, left click it once, and I would like to edit the brightness and contrast of this lighthouse photo. So I'm going to select brightness and contrast and it created a new layer and it is above the background layer. Um, the best way that I can describe how layers work in programs like Photoshop and Photopea is try to think of them as um, sheets of stacked plastic. So you have your background layer at the very bottom and then you have this sheet of plastic on top that you can edit various aspects. There we go, like that. And also you can turn this layer off at any point in time and remove that little sheet of plastic. That makes sense. Um, once you have your brightness and contrast layer up, play with this slider bar, dragging it left and right, and play with the contrast as well to see where you would like your lighthouse brightness and contrast to be. I just wanted a little bit darker of a photo, so I'm just dragging brightness down a little bit. And I don't want the contrast too high because you lose some detail, so I'm dragging the contrast down just a little bit as well. And I'm just gonna toggle that layer off and on to see the before and after by selecting this little eye icon for after, okay. I'm gonna go ahead, turn that layer off, and um, I'm gonna show you how to select a very specific area of your photo. Are there any questions before I move on to this next uh, aspect, Caitlin? You're good. All right, so I turned my layer off. I can also delete it completely, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Delete selecting that little trash can down there. And let's say if I didn't want to apply brightness to the entire photo, I only wanted to apply it to half or a very specific section, I'm going to left click this rectangle select tool or this marquee tool, keyboard shortcut of M, select that. And I'm going to left click and drag, I'm holding down on the mouse, left click and drag from this upper left of this photo to the middle lower portion of this photo to where I'm about halfway over that lighthouse. Then I let go 
and you get this little dotted line. So once again, I selected the marquee tool or the rectangle select tool, the keyboard shortcut of M. I'm left click and dragging from the upper left to this lower middle point of the photo. And then I let go and I get that dotted line. All right, so I'm basically telling Photopea, I want you to apply the change in this area of the photo and nowhere else. I'm gonna go back to our adjustment layer, new adjustment layer down here, that little circle with the half filled, half not. Select that. I'm gonna go up to brightness and contrast. All right, and if you notice, I don't know if you can see it, I can't zoom in unfortunately, but on the layers panel, you'll notice on the brightness and contrast layer, now there is a little um, rectangle that shows half white, half black. And that is a little visual representation of the selection that you have just made. So I'm gonna drag brightness way down to finally see those clouds. And let's see here. Move that. Very nice. Yeah, I applied it to half of the photo. So if you ever need to do a gradual change like that, um, you can deselect what you're working on with your lasso tool selected. Just left click anywhere and it will, um, I'm sorry, your marquee tool, and it will get rid of that little dotted line area. Just left click anywhere. Okay, so that's a before and an after. Any yeah. questions about that process? Yes. Yes, we have a question. Awesome. Yes. Um, so we have someone that wants to know if you, when you delete a layer, uh, does that adjustment then get lost? Yes. So if I were to delete this brightness and contrast layer, I have it selected. You can see it's this dark gray outline. Just delete it and it is gone forever. Um, you can do control Z to undo your delete. Um, or if you don't want to lose it forever, just toggle it off and it will still be in that pile essentially of, you know, those stacked sheets of plastic, but it won't show up. So I tend to have a lot of layers um, that I don't have visible just because I don't like to delete a whole lot of stuff, but it will go away forever once you hit that delete button. Awesome. Any other questions or follow-ups to that? That was perfect. Thank you. Okay, perfect. All right. So, but let's say if you want to get even more specific, you don't want to apply it to your whole photo. You don't want to apply it to half of your photo. You want to apply it to, let's say, this lighthouse only. Um, let me show you how to do that. I'm going to select the zoom tool, keyboard shortcut of Z as in zombie. And I'm going to left click. And I'm going to get real close to that lighthouse. A little too close. I'm going to hold alt and zoom back out. Alt click. Okay, so I want to apply a change just to this lighthouse. I can't do that with the marquee tool. Um, I'm going to select the lasso tool, keyboard shortcut of L. L is in love. Left click that lasso tool. <clears throat> and I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to start up here. The key point to the lasso tool is you want to meet up with your origin points. You want to do one continuous shape that meets up with your starting point. So I'm going to left click and drag as best I can with a mouse. This will be a slightly frustrating process if you don't do this regularly. So please keep that in mind. And you don't have to make your selection perfect. So let's say I accidentally went super far out. I'm still going to meet up with my origin point. I'm going to get that little dotted line that appears. But I'm like, oh no, I accidentally went way outside of that lighthouse. I don't want to select this part out here. 
So with my lasso tool still selected, if I hold Alt on my keyboard and draw a shape around that area that I did not want to select, it will deselect it. That's as long as you're holding Alt, you will be able to take away from your selection. If you missed a section, like I know I missed this little railing down here, with your lasso tool selected, you hold Shift, click and drag to draw around that area you missed, and it will add your selection. So Alt takes away and Shift adds. So it's a very handy tool if you aren't really great at um, drawing with your mouse just yet. Okay, so I want to, if you notice with the marquee tool or the rectangle tool, it made a very stark line down the middle of where brightness was being adjusted and where it wasn't. So I'm going to make this transition a little bit smoother so that people might not notice it as much. And we can do that through this process called feathering. So with your lighthouse selected, right click anywhere on your canvas and hover over modify has a little sub menu so right click hover over modify and then go down to feather select feather and i'm going to do i'm going to do 10 pixels this is where um, you're going to have to do a lot of experimenting on your own for your your own photos um, Feathering basically softens the edge of your selection to where it blends in a little bit more. If you feather it too much, your piece might get washed out. It might look like it's heavily photoshopped. Um, so just play around with feathering and softening the border of your selection um, till you get kind of a seamless effect. So I've typed in 10 pixels. I'm going to select OK. It looks like nothing changed, but trust me, it's gonna look a little bit better. And instead of brightness, uh, I would like to adjust the saturation. So I'm gonna select new adjustment layer down here, that little circle. And I'm gonna to go to hue and saturation instead. Cause I want this lighthouse to just pop. I want it to be super colorful. So I'm gonna drag saturation up I'm going to drag it all the way up. Whoa, a little too much. So I'm going to drag it to about the 30 area. Okay. And I'm going to left click anywhere to get rid of that line. And I'm going to zoom out and see what that looks like. So I hit Z on my keyboard. I'm holding Alt and then I left click. Much better. All right before and after just that red is a little bit more popping the bricks look a little bit more colorful i just like adding that little extra emphasis onto that lighthouse very nice are there any questions on that process caitlin not on that process um but someone was curious if they should be able to use PhotoP with their iPad and Apple Pencil. Ooh, that is a good question. Um, I haven't tried PhotoP on any um, other device other than a Windows laptop. But if you do try it out, um, let us know if it works. I, I know this is web browser based, so as long as you can pull up Chrome, I think, is the, the preferred web browser um, that PhotoP likes. Imagine if you can pull that up on your iPad, it might work. Um, I, I no. We did just get someone else chiming in um, that they are able to have it work on their iPad. I think it might just depend on the browser. I think the recommended is, like Hannah said, uh, Google Chrome. Don't use Safari is what I've seen so far. Cool. All right. I'm glad we have some, some techie people in there able to give us some, some wisdom. Awesome. Any other questions I can answer before we move on? 
Um, I think we're good. All right. So let's see here. <laughs> I feel like editing. I'm going to go up to file. I'm going to go to open. And let me see here. I'm going to show you all um, kind of the same process again with yellow flower. I'm going to do open. So let's see here. I'm going to go back to lasso tool. And I'm going to left click and drag over one of these petals. All right, and I'm going to right click. And I'm going to hover over modify. I'm going to select feather. For this one, I'm going to have it be five pixels just because it's a smaller area to select. It's not an entire you know, lighthouse, just one petal. Hit OK. <clears throat> and let's try, let's see what black and white does, actually. Let's see. Oop. Very nice. So you can turn a part of your photo black and white by selecting the lasso tool selecting a part of your photo, and then selecting adjustment, and then black and white. I did notice on this photo, because I am a perfectionist, there is a speck on that petal down there, and I just can't have that. So let me show you guys <clears throat> how to get rid of imperfections in your photo. <coughs> okay, so, I'm going to go ahead and delete the black and white layer. We can return to that later I'm going to delete that. And I hit Z on the keyboard and I zoomed in to where this little speck is down here. And I'm going to make a copy of this background layer because what we're going to cover now is um, what's called destructive editing. We are going to be rewriting the pixel of the photo itself, which um, is a permanent quote unquote change. So I like to circumnavigate that by making a copy of the background layer so that if I mess up, I can just delete that copy and start over. Um, so navigate to your layers panel on the right and right click background with that pretty little flower and select duplicate layer. All right, and it created a layer one above it so we can edit to our heart's content and delete it if it gets too weird. All right, so I mentioned the clone stamp tool earlier. It is one of my favorite tools in Photoshop and Photop. So navigate to your tools panel over here, little toolbar, and select clone tool with the keyboard shortcut of S as in Sam. <clears throat> All right, and you'll get a little circle uh, wherever your mouse is. And think of that as your brush, your brush diameter. And in order to get rid of this little speck up here, we have to sample from an area. So dip our paintbrush into an area that doesn't have a speck. So that we can tell Photop, hey, take the paint from this area and put it on top of this speck to get rid of it. So with the clone stamp tool selected, I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard and it's going to turn into a little cross and I'm going to go just above the dot, the little speck, and I'm going to left click once and I'm going to let go of alt. And if you notice, it gives you a little preview of the area you just selected. So then I'm just going to left click over that spec and it goes away. It's pretty neat. It's a little before and an after. Okay. Look at that. It's a perfect, perfect little flower now. No specs. All right. Are there any questions on the um, black and white tool or the clone stamp tool just yet? Uh, not just yet. Thank you. All right. Let's see here if there's any 
Yeah, there's a little speck right there, but I think I'll leave that. Okay, let's see here. Let's do a fun process next that I do all the time on my own photos. I'm gonna go up to file. I'm gonna go up to open. And let's do blemish. I'm gonna click on blemish, click open. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to get rid of blemishes in your photos. Let's see here, we're going to be using, let's try the spot healing tool first. Either way, I'm going to make a copy of my background. Do right click, duplicate layer, just to make sure I'm working on layer one. So if I mess up at all, I can just start over and delete it. So over here is the spot healing brush tool. It looks like a little Band-Aid. So left click that, <clears throat> has a keyboard shortcut of J. And you get a very tiny, tiny little brush diameter. The key to using the clone stamp and the spot healing tool and the healing tool is that you want your brush diameter, that circle, to be a little bit bigger than the area that you are editing. <clears throat> so to increase the size of that, you could go up here to your options bar, select that little drop down triangle and increase it manually. But I like to hover over the area that I would like to edit. So I'm gonna zoom in. There we go. And I'm gonna select J. So I'm gonna edit out this blemish first. And I'm gonna use the bracket tools, or bracket keys, excuse me, on the keyboard. I'm gonna use the right bracket key to increase the size of my brush diameter and the left bracket key to decrease the size of it. And I'm gonna try and get it just right. Maybe I'll increase it just a little bit more. <clears throat> and let's see here. I'm just gonna left click once. It's gonna take a little bit to load, but bam, it makes that blemish disappear. I'm trusting PhotoP to fill in the details um, of the surrounding skin to get rid of that blemish. So I'm gonna show you an alternative way in a little bit how to do that if PhotoP is kind of not doing a great job at it. Let's see how it does with this blemish over here. This one might be a little bit harder. I'm gonna increase it to be just bigger than that red area. And I'm just gonna left click. Let's see what happens. Loading. <clears throat> oh, it is taking a little bit. I will say that PhotoP is a little bit um, slower and a little bit funkier than Photoshop, but it is free. Oh, hey, it did a really good job. All right, I'm gonna do a little before and after. Phenomenal. All right. Now up here, it can get a little bit more difficult whenever you have strands of hair and other things um, in, in that blemish area. So let me see here. I'm going to right click the spot healing tool on the toolbar and I'm going to select the healing brush tool. This is a slightly different way you can do the same process but it's a little bit more in your control and less in um, photo P's control. So let me see here. I'm gonna sample right up here. I'm gonna see if this will work. I'm gonna sample right up here where there is no blemish, no redness. So it's the same process as the clone stamp tool. So I right clicked and I went to healing brush tool instead of spot healing brush tool. And I'm gonna hold alt down. I'm gonna left click this unaffected area. And let's see if I can line that hair up. Hmm, not quite. Let's see, left click, boom. Okay, I'm gonna sample again. Alt, left click. Let's see, hmm, not quite. Maybe I'll sample up here. Okay, so it's kind of piecing it together a little bit by little bit. Let's see, sample from down here. That one, left click, alt, left click, left click. 
All right, so it's all about resampling different areas because you don't want to sample from an area that has a lot of shading, like right here, if you're going to be working on an area that has a lot of highlights. So if you're editing on the cheekbones, they're going to catch more light, or if you're editing underneath the eyes, it's going to be a little bit more shaded. So you want to make sure that you're sampling from an area that has the same-ish color properties and the same-ish brightness and contrast, if that makes sense. So I'm going to hold Alt, left click, then left click on there. Looking good. Now let's see if the regular spot healing brush tool can handle this little bit bigger area with the hair. So I'm going to right click my little band-aid again. I'm going to select spot healing brush tool. All right, let's just see if it can apply to this whole area. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to left click. It's going to take a little bit. Please type any questions you have into chat while we are waiting. Happy to answer them. Oh yeah, that did a really good job. Before and after. I'm gonna zoom out and maybe you guys can see. Before and after. Much better. All right. Let's see if it can handle this one in the hair a little bit because I always have a lot of difficulty editing that out myself. So I'm using the bracket keys to increase and decrease the size of my spot healing tool. All right, let's left click and see what happens. <clears throat> Perfect. All right, photo is actually really good at guessing what content to put in there. Very nice. <laughs> okay, I think that pretty much covers that spot healing tool. Are there um, any questions on how to do that process? Anything I need to show again? Could you reiterate the shortcut keys used for before and after? Sure, so the before and after, I don't know if there's actually a keyboard shortcut for it, but I go over to my layer panel and I was working on layer one instead of background and I just toggle that little eye icon next to that layer, toggle it off and on just by left clicking it with my mouse. So that's before and after. It's a great tool so you can kind of keep, keep your workflow in perspective and make sure you're not overdoing the editing and make sure it's all real subtle changes. We have a question about um, how do you do, is it a file save when you've achieved your final result or is there another method of saving in photo P? Absolutely. So I'm going to go up to file and I prefer to save all of my files as a PSD or a Photoshop document if I want to return to them to edit them later. So I like to do that by default and it will just download it for you. Um, but if you're done with your photo, you don't want to edit it anymore. You can go up to file and then export. And I recommend exporting as a JPEG. So that is the most common file format for photos that phones can read, computers can read, um, printers, all that fun stuff. I'm gonna select JPEG. And let's see here, I like to bump up the quality to 100% so I don't lose any pixels. It's the same quality as whenever I uploaded it. And I just make sure JPEG is selected. And it will download it to your downloads folder. Awesome, that's how you pretty much export in Photopea. Um, I like exporting as a Photoshop document so I can go back and edit it later because Photopea will open up Photoshop documents. Um, I've tested it by working in Photoshop and then bringing that Photoshop document into Photopea and it works and vice versa. I can download my Photopea document um, as a PSD and open it up in Photoshop and it's perfectly fine. We have another question about file type. Um, 
Does photo P have any issues with opening or viewing any type of uh, graphic file or is raw file fine? Oh, I've uh, imported raw files perfectly fine. Um, I don't have an example, unfortunately, today, but I'm able to import all of my, uh, I typically use CR2 because I have a Canon camera. <clears throat> I'm able to import CR2 with no issues. Um, it lets you edit the brightness and the saturation of it and uh, same as Photoshop. Um, but I haven't run into any other file type issues. I've only tried CR2s, Photoshop documents, and JPEGs. So as far as I know, those are all working just fine for, for me. Does that answer that question? It does, thank you. Um, do you think you could go over a brief um, kind of overview of open source software and how PhotoP um, kind of, it doesn't affect ownership? I do not feel qualified um, to go over Fortunately, I wish I could help, but um, I'm pretty new to photo P and so unfortunately I don't have an answer for you on that one. Mm -hmm. Would anyone like to learn about teeth whitening next? I know I would. Are there any questions uh, for, for anything remaining? I, I think you're good to move on. Okay. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to go up to file and open. And let's go to whiten teeth down here. All right. So teeth naturally have a yellowish tint to the enamel. And if you would like to have your teeth have a pearly white shine and you want your face to be blemish free, you can do all of that in Photopea. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard. I'm just going to zoom into those teeth and I'm going to use the lasso tool. Now just like with Photoshop, there are a ton of different ways to do the same thing. So the way that I do it might not be the most uh, might not make the most sense, but it's how I kind of trained myself on it. So please look up some alternative methods to see what works best for you. But for now, let's get started with the lasso tool. So I hit L as in love on my keyboard. You can also go over to the lasso tool on the toolbar and select it. And the tricky part, I'm going to left click and drag and I'm going to select half of these teeth. I want to show a little bit of before and after. So let's see here. Select these teeth. And like I said before, if you find that you missed a part of the tooth, hold shift with your lasso tool selected. And you can click and drag and add that back to your selection. Or if you went way out of line and want to deselect an area, hold Alt and it will take away from your selection. So you want to make sure you get as close to the border of those teeth as possible. Awesome. I'm going to right click my selection. I'm going to hover over modify and I'm going to select feather. For this one, I'm going to stick with five pixels because it's not the highest resolution image. And let's see here, I'm going to select OK. And let's do an adjustment layer. So go down to that circle again. Let's do color balance. I'm going to do, you can either do brightness or color balance first. Uh, it does not really matter which order. So basically, there's always going to be a little bit of a yellow tint. Um, in people's teeth. So I like to add some blue because the opposite of blue is yellow. And we want to just take away some of that yellow. 
And I see sometimes there's a tint of red. So let me just take that away. Um, by default, color balance opens up in shadows. So I like to do a little bit of editing in shadows and then I like to hop over to midtones. Midtones are just an all around adjustment. I'm just gonna take away some more red, add a little bit more blue. Okay. And then I'm going to, now that I'm happy enough with that color editing, I might return to it. I'm gonna go back to new adjustment layer and I'm going to bump up the brightness because we want a pearly white bright smile. You don't want it to be too bright because that gets a little bit weird, but brightening it just enough to give it a natural kind of glow. All right, let's zoom out. I'm gonna get rid of my little selection. Ooh, much better. Okay, you can kind of compare it to the left side of teeth, of the teeth. This is much wider, a little bit brighter, but not kind of obviously photoshopped. You want to make sure whenever you're making changes, they're subtle. Looking much better. I think this tooth right here is still a little bit more yellow or maybe a little bit more red than I'm comfortable with. So I'm going to select my lasso tool again, L on the keyboard. And I'm just going to draw around this tooth. I think it needs a little bit more editing. I'm going to right click, hover over modify, select feather, five pixels, just fine. And let me see here. I'm going to go back to color balance. And I'm going to stay on midtones. I'm going to add a little bit more blue. Oh, that looks much better. I'm going to take away a little bit of red. And let's do the same for the brightness. Drag that up just a little bit. Okay. I'll drag that brightness down just a smidge. That's looking much better. All right. Okay, well, um, y'all already know how to do the export. You go up to File, Export as in JPEG. Um, are there any questions? I'll just be kind of editing some photos and doing some fun stuff if anybody has any questions uh, about Photobeam. We did have a question if, um, if someone has a gap in their teeth, is that something that Photopea can fill and still have a beautiful smile? Hmm, that is a good question. I think it's possible. Let me think. You could use the clone stamp tool, but you would run into the issue of, so let's say if um, this actress had a, had a gap right there, I could use the clone stamp tool to kind of pull the tooth over and pull the other tooth over, but you might run into the issue of having wider than normal teeth. I guess depending on how big that, how wide that gap is, um, you might be able to use the clone stamp tool. There is also another option. Let me see if I can pull this off. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna make a copy of background and I'm gonna have my lasso tool selected and let's just see if this works. I'm gonna select this tooth. Let's see here. I'm going to turn off these layers just in case. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to tap C as in cat and then I'm going to hold control and tap V as in Victor. And let's see, photo P wants to see text. Okay, awesome. And let's see, I'm going to use the move tool. So you can um, in photo P select a certain area of your photo, hold control, Tap C as in cat, hold control, tap V as in Victor, and it will paste that somewhere on your photo. Um, so you could essentially kind of move that tooth over and then erase the border just a little bit to kind of make it blend. But once again, you might run into that same issue of um, a very wide tooth whenever the other one doesn't look kind of as the same width. Hopefully that answers that question. I haven't personally tried to do that, but 
definitely the clone stamp tool is one of the, um, in my opinion, one of the most powerful and one of the funnest tools in both Photoshop and Photopea. Excellent. We have another question that I were wondering if you could demonstrate uh, coloring sections of a black and white photo. Hmm, that is something I have not done personally, but let's see if I can wing it. So I do have a faded photo. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> so first, the first thing I like to do in, in faded photos is I like to repair kind of the, uh, the hairs and stuff like that. But let's see. Maybe I can use the lasso tool. Let's just see if I can color this this man's eyes. I haven't ever tried to color in flesh before. I think that's where a lot of the artistry lies in uh, color editing, but let me see. I'm going to use the lasso tool. I'm going to select this man's eyes, just the, the irises. Hmm, maybe I can pull this off. Ooh, let's see. Okay. And let's just barely feather this because there's not a whole lot of pixels in here. Select two. And mm -hmm. I might use the brush tool, but let's see if color balance will do anything. Okay, so we just add some blue maybe. Add some green. Hmm. See here, midtones. Kind of, he looks a little ghostly, a little ominous, but that might that might be a way to do it. Um, there are extensive tutorials on how to colorize photos in Photoshop. I think we might even have one on our YouTube channel from a year or two ago. Um, Photoshop, if you watch Photoshop tutorials, you can pretty much do the same thing in Photopea. I think the keyboard shortcuts will be different. So if they say press K on your keyboard, it might not be the same exact tool. Um, so definitely find some Photoshop tutorials on how to colorize a photo because I'm not sure if that's exactly how it is best done. But he has blue eyes now. Let me know if y'all have any other questions. I'm just gonna clone stamp some of the flaws out of here. Very nice. Alt, left click. I bump the opacity down to make this a little bit smoother. Alt, left click. Much better. Mm -hmm. All right, that's improving. Ooh, there's one thing I like to show with the, let's do the pink flower. Let's see here. I want to show you guys how to apply a vignette. Sometimes in your photos you want to apply a little artsy filter. Um, I'm going to right click the rectangle select tool. I'm going to select the ellipse select. And I'm going to draw shape a little bit bigger than this rose by left click and dragging. All right. And I'm going to right click. I'm going to select inverse. So I basically want to apply this effect to everything but the area that I've selected. Select inverse. Then I'm going to right click and do feather. This time I'm going to do, let's see what 70 pixels looks like. We want to make this border very, uh, very soft and very gradient. Let's see. Hmm, 75 doesn't quite cut it, but that's all right. Let's see. All 
right, all right. So I got a little bit of color in there. So the flower really pops for after. Awesome. Let's try that with the yellow flower again. See here. Let's try a little bit bigger. Okay, feather 70. Let's try that. Go down here to black and white. All right, that looks pretty cool. Neato. Very colorful, a lot more subtle. Any other questions? I'm just going to keep on playing for a little bit. I know it this time. All right. I do feather. Let's do 75. Very nice. You get a little bit of a gradient effect on this one from left to right. And if you notice, it fades pretty smoothly. You don't see a stark, do this, you don't see a stark difference. This is with no feathering applied. You can tell right where I drew the line. This is much more gradual, kind of artsy. I like that. We do have a couple of questions that have trickled in. Cool. So we had someone request that you kind of go over the, the color change on the flower one more time. Okay. And someone also wanted to know, um, is the feather, it's affecting the edges of what you're selecting, correct? Yes. So it basically, let me just turn all these off. Um, if I did not feather at all, this is the effect of black and white that I, I put in there. And you can see there's this very strong line. You can tell um, that there is an obvious border to that selection. If I feathered it, you can't really see the line. It just kind of gradually fades out, fades in. And it's a much smoother, um, smoother area. Okay, and as for the other question, they wanted to know how to go through the um, black and white, making a photo look black and white again? Is that uh, it? No, the, um, they just wanted to know, well, their initial question was to just see the color change of the flower one more time. Okay. Let's see here. Lasso tool. This time I'm going to select two petals. As the lasso tool selected, I'm going to meet up with my origin point and I'm going to right click. I'm going to hover over modify and I'm going to select feather. And I definitely don't want 75 pixels this time. I'm going to do, let's try five. I'm going to select OK. Then I'm going to go back down to the new adjustment layer icon. I'm going to select that once and I'm going to go up to, you can do hue and saturation or color balance. Um, hue and saturation if you want to just kind of change the overall um, color of your petal. You can make that color really pop. But if you would like, you can also just do color balance. And just have midtones selected. You can kind of add if I wanted that to be a lot more orange. Um, you can add a lot of orange. Just add some other colors. Maybe I'll go to highlights. Yeah, you can do some varying adjustments in there to kind of change the color. I like to play around in hue and saturation a lot just because it's just a lot of fun to 
watch the colors change really quickly. <laughs> It'll keep it a nice bright purple. Nice. Hopefully that answers that question. I think it did. Um, would you also be able to demonstrate how to remove an, an item from a photo? Sure. Um, let's say if I wanted to remove this leaf up here. Um, let's see, clone stamp tool, keyboard shortcut of S. And I'm going to make a background copy. Right click, duplicate layer of that background. And I'm going to increase my brush diameter. And I'm going to increase my opacity because I had it turned down a little bit before. See if 80 ish percent. So let's hold Alt next to your, your unaffected area, left click. This uh, looks a little rough. I'm going to turn the opacity down. Hold Alt, left click, and just kind of paint it in. Still looking a little rough. Might take a few passes to get this to look decent. I know you can also, as an alternative, um, duplicate layer, lasso tool. Oops, select this area. Control C, Control V, and then use your move tool. You can just kind of drag the background over and then clone stamp the edges. Let's see here. It's where you kind of get it to blend in a little bit more. A couple of different ways to do it in, uh, in Photo P. All right. Okay, um, we are at the end of our program. Um, a little bit of resource information for you guys. PhotoP does not have two terribly many video tutorials out there. Um, this is, it's a very small team that is working on this free software. So they do have a tutorial on, like a tutorial page on their site. Um, Learn Photo P and it covers workspace, navigation, how to do all of the processes in Photo P. Um, there are some tutorials on YouTube that you can utilize. I don't know which ones to recommend really, but I highly recommend just getting into Photo P and just playing with every tool and every aspect. Um, there is also a source available for all Plano Public Library card holders called Book a Librarian. If you have any questions, you would like a follow up or um, anything like that, you can Google Plano Book a Librarian, use your card number, your library card number, type that in and we can schedule a 30 minute one on one session tutorial on a software or subject of your choosing as long as it is not rocket science or something extremely specific and complicated. Normally, we can help you guys out. Um, all right, that is it. Thank you guys so much for joining us for Photo P Basics. Have a great rest of y'all's day.